Welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. As promised, I'm going to do a bonus video this week. I had a lot of extra footage left over from this Matchbox racing van because I planned to show you guys how I made the decals in Photoshop and printed them, etc. All that stuff got cut, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to make a, a separate video, and I'm going to show you how I do it. These were printed out on an inkjet printer. Before we get into the Photoshop, there's a couple of things I wanted to show you first here. Let me get, uh, let me, let me arrange some things. For the most part, I use this El Cheapo water slide decal transfer paper. This is just an El Cheapo brand off of Amazon, and the reason I use it is because of the size. I like this A4 size because that's a standard recognized size of paper and it's easily selectable in Photoshop for projects. Another one that's popular is this um, five and a half by eight and a half deco paper by Testers. I didn't notice any print quality differences between the two. My printers seem to not have an opinion about that. I use the inkjet version of this brand to do mine. And that's just because it's cheap and it comes in a big, you know, a good size package. 20 sheets will last you quite a while. There's transparent and then there's white. So you gotta be careful when you're buying things. Um, this stuff here, I believe, is transparent as well. So much French on here, you can barely even find the English. So when you're making decals, it's important to consider what your project is gonna be. So for this van, I knew my decals were going to be on top of white paint, which means they're gonna be in full color because they're on a white background. If your decal is printed red like this and you try to put this over a different color, I'll show you. I'll show you what happens. Basically what I've been trying to say is all these printed decals that you do at home require a white background in order to be in full color. I'm just moistening the backing paper to separate this so I can show you. I'm not gonna stick it to this car. Let me find another car. Here we got the Subaru here. So let's see what happens when you put this decal on top of yellow. It's gonna be full color. Hummer truck. As you can see, it's gonna look terrible. You won't even be able to see it. So that's when you're printing on transparent paper. If we were gonna print on white backed sheets instead of transparent, your decal is gonna look like this. So you can take as much time as you want to trim around your letters and everything. Get it nice and close. But when you go do the actual transfer, the white stays with your uh, lettering, etc. So when you put your decal on, it's gonna look exactly like this. Most of the time when you see people doing decals at home, it's on cars like this, you know, a car that's just perfectly white. You can make your decals. I did these in a video earlier and sticking them on a white car is no problem. Full color, looks really good. Here's another example of some decals I made here. This is on top of a metallic white. So again, full color, doesn't look too bad, but it's always white vehicles. Here's a nice golf set and you're thinking, oh baby, this will be amazing. All we need is a car that's this color and we'll have a beautiful golf car. Well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. The other thing you gotta be careful for is when you're purchasing your decals online, know what you're buying. You might see a nice sheet like this on eBay for $3 and think, oh, that's beautiful. Look at all those decals. I'm gonna be able to do all kinds of stuff with those. They're probably either gonna be on white paper or transparent paper. You won't get quality blue back decals like this. You see how these have actual white toner right in there, so you know that's gonna be white for sure. And these are expensive, and they're a little bit more money to print, that's why, I mean, the printers that do these are thousands of dollars, so. It's a lot, it's out of reach for a lot of people. I'd like to get into one eventually for the channel, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna crudely cut out this little golf here, and we're gonna stick it on the hood of our little car. So I actually got burned by buying all these decals, these golf ones. I bought these back in the day before I really knew what was going on with homemade decals, right? I kind of thought they were all the same. So you see how absurdly transparent that is. So there we go, that's what happens when we use a transparent decal on a color that isn't white. We miss out on so much detail. So you gotta keep that in mind if you're spending a lot of time designing, you know, decal sheets like this. You gotta know your project. Usually white paint is the only way to go. I mean, unless you're looking for 
something that looks like that. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look right. You know what I mean? Peel that off so we don't ruin our little buggy here. So, so far, get the right paper. Know what kind of project you're working on. And unless it's on top of white paint, chances are it's not gonna be in full color like this. So I guess we could go, uh, maybe we'll jump over to the computer and I'll show you how I made these from scratch using a photograph of the original van, okay? Let's do it. So all I did was I found a real nice clean side picture of this matchbox and I'm just gonna grab what I need to make decals. So check this out. I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, let's paste that over here. And I'm gonna grab this. And we'll paste that over here. And I'll get rid of this. I'm definitely not any kind of uh, Photoshop master. I'm slowly learning, but uh, that is about it for now. So I'm gonna just get rid of this white by using my little magic wand tool. Boop. And we can get rid of that. And then we just get to clean everything up. So basically, check this out. So this is an actual photograph, right? So you got all these different imperfections and, you know, light right here. Blasted this out so it was no longer red. That's no big deal. And I'll show you why. Let me just continue deleting the insides of all this stuff. Boop. Boop. Uh, boop. Yeah, that one could probably stay. So, let's say if I were to fix this corner, I could just take this corner. Rotate this bad boy to 90. So there's basically a lot of this kind of stuff where after a while you'll just get good at it. So something like this. Once you zoom in real close to it, like it would print all right as it is, but I'm gonna, I wanna darken this stuff up a little bit. So what I can do is take my color sampler and take the darkest color I can find on here. Let's call it this one. And then usually what I'll do is I'll just go in here with a brush. If we could zoom into a molecular level here, and I usually just kind of go around and tint everything. So I'm just going around, I'm getting rid of all this blue, as you can see, just staying in the lines. Getting some of this blue. And we're just trying to get it all just one basic color. Yeah, so that hour is looking a lot better. So you get the idea. I'm basically gonna just clean all this up, get rid of any kind of light discrepancies or chips or anything like that. Smooth everything out. So obviously the better the photograph, the better the result is gonna be. This photo isn't terrible, it's not that bad. All right, so that's looking pretty good, pretty good. Now we're gonna clean up all this red on this matchbox. So, let's try this first. Use my little wand, I can hold shift to keep on selecting more and more colors if I want. Let's do this, I'll fill with the color. I can select the darkest red I can find. Probably that's a nice red, and I'm gonna fill that up. You might think, oh man, this thing looks terrible. Well, you gotta keep in mind how small this actually is. So when it's on the side of our, our little van, it's gonna be even smaller than that, probably, probably like that. So it's gonna look just perfect, right? We got it blown up so big though. So it just kind of looks kind of trashy when it's super huge, but that's all right. So, right. 
and I'll just lighten up this area here and lighten up this area here. That one I could probably leave attached. Yeah, I bet you we got a real good looking R now. There. Beautiful. So how do we size it now for the van? So when it's time to figure out what size our decal needs to be in Photoshop, this is the easiest way to do it. You take your Vernier calipers. We'll get what I would like to call an exact size. Whatever size you want your decal to be is what you need to write down. So we're going to call this one 21.81. So let me write that down. We'll call this one MB 21.81 by 5.63, 5.63, beautiful. We'll grab this racing one too, just so we're here. We'll do it twice. Seventeen ninety five by call it three point four. Three point four. And this is the racing. All right, so those are those two decals that we will size in the computer, and then we will print, and then I'll show the installation on the van. Now that we're all cleaned up. Got everything looking as best we can. We're going to use our rectangular marquee tool up here and we're going to get the tightest possible highlight without cutting it. So that one looks pretty precise. So now I can cut and I'm going to go to new. This is where it's important to have our sizes earlier on in the video. We're gonna make a new document over here. What do we call that? MB. And in millimeters, our width was 21.81 by 5.63. And presto. So now this box that we have right here is the exact size that that deco needs to be to fit on our van in scale, if that makes sense. So now all we have to do is paste our decal and then you have to size it into the box. You just stretch it to fit. Usually when you do this, it starts off as real big like this. And then you just kind of line up a corner and shrink her down. And then once you are happy with what you have, you can copy it again. Now that it's properly sized, we'll make a new. This is where we go to our A4 size, which is the same size as our printer paper. So this is, this is our brand new sheet. And when I paste on here, now this is the exact size that it's gonna print. We don't have to worry about having this background white or it doesn't matter because if we're using transparent paper it could it could be white it could be uh, an alpha it doesn't really matter so this is the page now where you'd want to copy and paste and make your whole little spreadsheet because these matchbox ones are the right size okay let's go do that one more time so we have our racing decal here that's the only thing left on this page so let me Try get a nice tight highlight of this one as well. Cut this one and we'll go to new. And again, we start with millimeters. And this one was 17.95 by 3.4. Boop. Again, teeny little box. We go to paste. Mine fits pretty close because I've already done this. So we'll stretch this one to fit in the box the best we can. Have a look. Uh, I could go up a little bit. 
The secret to making nice decals on Photoshop really is just learning the basics of Photoshop. Once you learn the basics of Photoshop, everything else comes natural. So again, if you want to delete this white background, all we got to do is unlock this background. Oh, I didn't realize we were cut off a little bit. If we wanted to get rid of this white background here, usually there's a little lock right here. You just unclick it and then you just hit delete. So now this is sized and we can copy it and we'll go back over to our page here and paste and now this one is sized so we can just hit control V control V control V and just make a bunch of those you can make as many as you want there so now you can arrange this any way you want and as long as you are printing in an A4 platform at your printer which is easily selectable just A4 because it's the size of the paper you're using when you print they will fit exactly the same as your old ones, providing that you got accurate measurements with your vernier calipers. Pretty easy. Now let's go to installation. Okay, now that our decals are printed, usually I'll do a test print on white piece of paper first, rather than using decal paper for a test. And then I could either size it up like this, or you can test print on paper, you can cut them out, lay them on your van, whatever you got to do, but we can't use these yet. We have to protect them. Right now, if we were to dip this in water, all this ink would just run. It'd be, it'd be just a mess. So we have to protect them with a lacquer or some sort of clear coat. And what I use is Tester's Spray Lacquer. Now, I'm not necessarily 100% sold on this product. I know if I put too much of this on, at one time it will make these things bleed and it'll make a mess of them. So I think my next next time I go lacquer shopping, I'm going to look for some um, stuff in, you know, the woodworking section of the hardware store. They got all kinds of nice lacquers there. So in the video, you're going to see in a minute here where I'm I'm spraying this lacquer on here. What I do is I do a light coat and then I quickly dry it with my airbrush. And then I spray another light coat and I quickly dry it with my airbrush. And then it's just ready to go instantly. I find if you spray a wet coat on here and you set them down, it's really easy for them to run. So it's important that you do light coats and let them dry, either hold them in front of a fan, blow on them, do whatever you gotta do. All right, front and center. Start with this old matchbox here. Guess I could get a bunch of them all ready to go. Do 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 do. Actually, I'm gonna use some micro set this time. Matchbox racing, here we come. Come on, baby, let me move you around a little bit. Alrighty then, I'm going to go throw this back in the oven and I'm just going to let all the water and stuff evaporate from this and then I'm going to clear coat. There you go, I hope you guys enjoyed my decal making video. Hopefully that alleviates a lot of the questions that have been coming in and also it will probably be a pretty popular video. I noticed my old decal of making video, which is 
pretty junky, I'll admit. You know, it has almost 200,000 views on it, so people out there are looking for this information. So hopefully you enjoyed. My next video will be more than likely tomorrow. I'm going to do another car, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, keep your stick on the ice. I'll see you later. Bye.